We started pushing back on ESG. Those funds that have been focused on ESG have just not been focused on the bottom line. I do not consider ESG uh, in, in, in my stock picks. If you're grading a company based upon how it treats employees or how it treats customers, um, you may not be focused on well, the financials. And as a stock picker, I need to focus on the financials. That was a number of guests this week. Florida's chief financial officer, Jimmy Petronas, as well as Bullseye American Ingenuity's Adam Johnson, speaking with me on this program about their take on ESG and a mandate uh, in investing, which the White House is pushing. Joining me right now is Calamos Investments president and CEO, John Kudunas. John, it's great to see you. Great to see Thanks you, Thanks so Maria. much. You're ringing the closing bell on the New York Stock Exchange tomorrow with the launch of your new Global Sustainable Equities ETF. The symbol is SROI. Tell us about this ETF. Well, SROI uh, stands for Societal Return on Investment. Uh, and it's a joint venture that we have 50-50 with Giannis Antetokounmpo, the NBA uh, superstar. Uh, we met a couple years ago, and uh, we were thinking about certain things to do, uh, and we had a lot of shared values, and uh, we share values when it comes to family, community, uh, financial literacy, environment, and um, it was right about that time when I acquired a ESG team uh, from Portland, Oregon, that's been doing this for over 25 years. Um, and I said, it makes a lot of sense for us to launch a product in that space. I love that you're teaming up with him. We've got the pictures uh, of, of you all together. But, John, what about these criticisms? That if you're going to focus on ESG, you're not focusing on growth, you're not focusing on what you really want to be driving your investment decisions. Well, th there's, there's a lot of criticism and there's a lot of headwinds. We're in the investment game for the long run, uh, Maria. And what I have to say to them, when I was looking to get into the ESG business, which it's really a, a movement that cannot be stopped. It is so huge. If you look at the amount of money that's invested in ESG, in 2020, there was about 35 trillion. Uh, in 2022, just last year, it's up to like 43 trillion. And they're predicting 53 trillion by 2025, which is more than a third of all investable assets. John, let me let me ask are you a question. going to be in ESG. Yeah, let me ask you a question on ESG. Okay. Yes. The proxy services got into a lot of trouble by being opaque about how they mm -hmm. determine one stock versus another, whether an oil company deserved to be the index or not. What are you doing about this? If I want to know what your rules are about how you create sure. this indice. Can I find that out? Because, Absolutely. frankly, ESG has underperformed pretty well every index. And so if you're looking for performance, it's not ESG. I'd like to know what's in your index. Uh, Kevin, that's a great question. And the reason we picked this group is that they have their own processes, which is very, very transparent. And they've been doing it for 25 years. But we're in a business for performance. Mm, that's right. That's what, that's what we want to And in, in 25 years, uh, they've outperformed the S&P almost every single year. So What, what I, has? Calamos has or well, ESG? The, this team. This team. They didn't we, call we, it ESG 25 years ago. No, it was way before it became... Because you, know, if you very, didn't have oil stocks in your index for the last 36 months, you really trailed. There's yeah. no question that this last year has been... An anomaly. Two years. Oil has been up for two straight years. Look yes. at Exxon Mobil last year up 75 percent. It's hurt the ESG funds last year for sure. But then again, it's hurt a lot of different funds. When you have bonds that are you know underperforming as well as stocks, a lot of the funds well, got hurt. What are the performers? Are... Can you give us some specific examples of what types of companies would be the performers that would actually give us a solid return? Because the criticism of ESG in general is is fair. That, and the numbers support that. Like, what are we investing in? Yeah. Okay, governance, social governance. What what are the companies? What are we investing in? Well, first, I'd like to to be clear. I don't agree having to be forced to be in ESG. Oh, you don't want a mandate. I don't think it's yeah. right. Nobody I think wants people a mandate. People should, if they want to do. We have over thirty funds. We'd like to offer to our investors uh, the ability to be in ESG if that's what they so choose. And if we have people that are professionals that can invest and outperform their indices over the long run, which we have, and hopefully they will continue in the future, there's no guarantees, well, right? do I want to buy but, solar? Do I want to buy a wind farm? Well, that's that, up to that the, that's up, stuff. That, that, that's up, just, that's up to, to know. well, they do energy, but sustainable energy, right? So, um, and it is, last year, nobody did well. But over the long run, and 
year over year, it can happen, and it's, it's rare, but we're really excited because we think we have the team, uh, Tony Tursic, uh, James Madden, and Beth Williamson are the key portfolio managers that we have that have been doing this for over 25 years. In fact, they're probably the first uh, fund that was fossil free. Mm -hmm. So this is way before it became a fad. This is way before, this is how they invest. This mm. is who they are. And I think it's hard to argue that most of us, if we can, um, look, if we can do the right thing for the earth, all of us don't want children to be abused in the, in, in the work setting. We want diversity. It's something that if we could point and, and, and we'll, get people to, to we'll do this, want that, it but, I, but I don't want to have to invest in a fund that, that avoids things like oil companies. I mean, yeah, we all want a clean planet, but it, it runs on oil right now. That's where we are. Even Joe Biden in the State of the Union said we need this for 10 more years. But if you can perform and have a diversity that in is, your portfolio. That is the numbers don't and the, lie. The and numbers and don't if lie. you can perform and have a diverse portfolio, um, then, then you would put some of it in there. And, and if you look at Europe, who's way ahead of us in terms of investing in ESG, and they're mandated, uh, you know, and, and when you have a third, over a third of all assets now that are investable going into ESG, you can't avoid it. Mm. So you might as well try to compete and do the best you can to perform. All right, we will, we will look forward to uh, the release tomorrow. You ring the closing bell. We'll watch you at the New York Stock Exchange. Congrats on the new ETF. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much. John Kadunas is the president and CEO of Calamos Investments. We'll be right back.